Hey, what's up you guys, welcome back. So the last time I did one of these Reddit React videos, it was really well received. So I thought, what the hell, let's do another one. And I've created a playlist actually, so I'm gonna call it Andy Reacts. Let me know if there's like a better title or something, but uh, if this is your first time watching this series and you didn't catch the last episode, I'll link to it down below in the description uh, and also probably somewhere up here. So uh, this is a show where I react to various posts, uh, mostly from Reddit, but I might branch out to more places in the future. Uh, basically, this is where I react to financial related posts. Uh, on Reddit and provide advice for the OP uh, or just react to it somehow. So uh, we can hopefully all learn something from this uh, and yeah, we can all probably hopefully be better at finance in the future and we can uh, retire early and achieve financial independence. So last time I reacted to r slash poor, which is a subreddit that's uh, mostly geared towards people who are considering themselves to be poor and are looking for advice on how to improve their situation. Uh, but today we're going to mix it up a bit. We're going to react on post uh, from several other subreddits, namely r slash personal finance. And since we're in Canada, r slash personal finance Canada. Uh, so I know I have a lot of fellow Canadian watching this show. Uh, so if you're one of my fellow countrymen, you will probably enjoy watching this. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. So first one is from Personal Finance, the, I guess, American one. I think most of them are American. Uh, so the OP named Alarming Use 3747 who says, Should I stay working in service? Uh, so he says, I graduated with a degree in communication. After graduation, I mostly worked in service because I had a difficult time finding a job. I also got fired a lot, which took a toll on my confidence. Right now, I'm still in service, but I'm doing the best I've done at a job. I'm 29 years old and I'm a barista. I was promoted after four months and have been promised more promotions, even management. Uh, there are also higher up positions in the company outside of management. The downside is that there are no benefits, just salary. My question is, should I stay at this company for a few years, move up, acquire some transferable skills, see where it takes me, or stop wasting my time and get a job that has benefits and higher pay? Uh, I guess I feel like because I don't have a lot of experience, I feel like I need to stay at my current job to grow as an individual and have something impressive on my resume. Uh, so this one actually hit really close to home because I have a friend who is pretty much in this exact same situation. Uh, well, not the exact same, but very similar. So basically, he was working as a barista at Starbucks, and he's been there for quite a few years. Uh, and the problem is that with these type of service jobs is that uh, your salary starts pretty low, and there's really limited opportunity for you to improve your salary. Uh, it doesn't go up by that much year over year. So it's really hard to build up a steady, large stream of income if you're only depending on uh, this job to do it, especially if you don't have like any side hustles or anything like that. Uh, and if you've been watching this show for a while, you would know that I work for a company called Wealthsimple. Uh, it's Canadian and you've probably heard about it at least if you're Canadian. Uh, so it's really popular in Canada. We're like a finance company that helps uh, people invest. And we also have a product called Trade, which is like the Canadian version of Robin Hood, as people call it. So anyways, I said to my friend, I'm like, hey, why don't you try to apply for Wealthsimple and uh, I'll put you down as a, you can put me down as a referral. So uh, why don't you try your luck, right? So uh, at first he was like, okay, I'll try it, but I don't think I'm gonna get it, right? He didn't think that he was gonna get it because his resume wasn't that good, blah, 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 or so he said, right? But I convinced him to apply and guess what? He got the job, right? So now he's working at Wealthsimple as well uh, and he's making twice what he was making at Wealthsimple simple like compared to Starbucks. Uh, so my advice to OP is just to put yourself out there even if you don't think your resume is very good. So you shouldn't discount yourself before you even try. I definitely do think that you should be looking at other options outside of your current job because the salary, as I said, uh, in these types of service jobs is just not very good at the moment, right? And if you can find another job that pays higher, well then you definitely should. And I think that nine out of 10 times is much better to switch jobs that has a higher salary than to like try and climb the corporate ladder, right? And this is assuming if you can switch at all, right? But like, as I said, at least try. And by the way, I'm not trying to like knock against service workers. I know how much we need service workers and I know how much 
uh, how hard service workers work without like getting a very high salary, right? I understand that. I've worked service jobs before. So, you know, I fully understand like the situation, uh, but you got to face the facts, right? And the facts is that uh, service jobs just don't get paid as much as other industries, right? So if you have an opportunity to get out of the service industry and into a different uh, industry or just any other job that pays more, then if you have that opportunity, I feel like you should take it. And if you like even think that you have like skills in other areas, maybe you should try and apply for other areas, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, again, I'm not trying to knock against service workers, but uh, that's just a fact. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, so. This next one is from Personal Finance Canada from user Reasonable Payments 30 uh, who says uh, he made the worst financial mistakes out of high school. $30,000 in student loan debt and no degree at 21. So he's looking to get his life back on track. Uh, any way, any advice to help out. Uh, so he says, hi everyone, I'm currently 21 years old, moved back uh, home with my family in Toronto to get my academic and financial life back in order. In 2017, I went to university with no career directions. I took out some OSAP loans. OSAP, if you guys don't know, is like the Ontario like government issued uh, student loans. Uh, it stands for Ontario Student Assistance Plan. Uh, so that's like the government program that provides students with loans. Uh, so anyways, I took out some OSAP loans and decided to live on campus for the university experience. A year in, I developed some serious depression and anxiety, which lead, which led me to fail most of my courses. I was placed on academic probation, uh, which uh, made me withdraw from university altogether. Uh, I then attended community college, taking random arts and science courses and doing flight training on the side in hopes of becoming a pilot. I was doing just fine until I lost my source of funding. I was forced to withdraw as I couldn't keep up with the cost of flight training. I decided to move back with my parents at 21 after accumulating $30,000 plus in student debt with no degree to show for it. I would like to know how I can get my life together academically and financially uh, as uh, I feel so overwhelmed. I applied to go back to university in the fall, but my past grades hold me back from admission. Any advice will help. Uh, so anyways, uh, in my opinion, I think that if going to flight school is your passion, then you should do that, right? So you should like try and like do flight school and forget about trying to get back into like university uh, or like doing arts and science courses that you're not even interested in. So a lot of people fall into this trap of thinking that they absolutely need to go to college or university, even if it's unrelated to their passion. And this could be a huge mistake. It's like if you wanted to be a chef, right? So if you wanted to be a chef, but you insisted on getting and like accounting degree, I don't know, for whatever reason, right? Uh, like, why are you trying to get an accounting degree to be a chef if that's not gonna help you become a chef, uh, right? So uh, you've just wasted all that time and energy trying to get that accounting degree. Uh, so it looks like, uh, and not to mention finances too, right? It's costly to get like a university degree these days. So it looks like OP wants to be a pilot, and he says that he was doing it on the side, which implies that what he's doing in college didn't really pertain to becoming a pilot. So again, why are you going to college then, right? So why not work for a few years and save up and then go back to flight school and just forget about the arts and the science and community college thing altogether. And regarding the student loans, uh, I'd actually uh, recommend you do a bit of research to see if you're eligible for the repayment assistance plan. Uh, so that's a government program that's offered by the government of Canada, which helps uh, student repay their loans if they can't find a job or have a very low income. Uh, sometimes you can even delay your entire payments altogether uh, and you have to like reapply every six months. But um, again, if you don't have any income, they're not going to like they're going to understand, right? They're not going to hound you for your payments uh, if you literally have no income and you have no money. And regarding that part about spending $30,000 and having nothing to show for it, uh, you know, I feel that that's rough. I understand. Uh, but the issue is that by continuing to pour money into that, uh, you're like, trying to get a degree that you don't want in the first place and the risk is uh, that you're making your financial situation worse. Uh, so this is something called the sunk cost fallacy. So an analogy that I can think of is that say you go to the casino and you have a streak of bad luck and you lose like 80% of the money that you walked in with. 
most people will be like, hey, I lost 80%, let's bet the last 20% all on one go and then I'll try to earn back my 80%. Uh, and more often than not, they lose the rest of the 20%, right? So the sunk cost fallacy is when you decide you pour so much resources and time into something that you just have to keep going. Uh, but this is a fallacy because the probabilities of success or failure, it doesn't change uh, no matter how much like previous resources that you poured into it, if especially if it didn't work before. So an example of this is let's say you flip a coin 10 times and uh, 9 times out of the 10 it lands in heads. Uh, well then you think that maybe the 10th time is more likely to land on tails uh, because the last nine times all landed on heads, right? But the correct answer is that each flip is independent of each other and your probabilities actually don't change. So on the 10th flip, you're still 50-50 uh, between heads and tails. Uh, so what happened during the other nine flips, during the previous nine flips, it doesn't influence your probabilities going forward. Uh, so uh, I think that it's also a bit of a pride thing, I think, uh, when people say, when you say to people that, oh, I went to school for like three years, and then people are like, okay, what degree did you go to? And you're like, I don't have a degree, right? Like, it, it kind of takes you down a notch, and it doesn't feel good on the inside to say it. I also understand that, uh, but you got to understand uh, what is best for you personally. You got to think what's best for yourself moving forward. And, uh, you know, don't think of just, getting into more debt to finish the degree that you're not, that's not even relevant to achieving your goals, right? Uh, so my advice to you is focus on being a pilot if that's what you really want. Focus on getting in or getting back to flight school. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say, right? So uh, that's that. Moving on, we have time for one more today. And the last one is going to be also from Personal Finance Canada. Uh, and this is from the user I am exception who asks, uh, how can people afford nice cars so frequently? Uh, so he says, uh, I have seen a lot of young people driving around cars like Porsche, uh, BMW, and also uh, all the other expensive cars. Uh, I'm just genuinely curious as to see how one can afford such high-end cars. I make six figures and I'm having a hard time putting together money for a car over 20k even with financing. Uh, I wanted to get a Tesla but I quickly closed their site when I saw uh, what it goes for and what kind of money I'll be putting up bi-weekly. Uh, so a lot of things I can say about this. Uh, first of all, how can people afford such expensive cars? They don't, right? So. A lot of people like to stretch what they can really afford when it comes to cars. Uh, and there's a decent chance that you see, like the people that you see, especially young people that you see with nice cars, uh, they can't actually afford them. And in an effort to keep up car payments, uh, they might be letting other bills run late, for example, credit cards or other things. And I know obviously this is not the case with everyone, right? Some people can actually afford their cars uh, because they're just born rich or they just make a really high income or for whatever reason, uh, they just they just have a lot of money, right? Uh, so what do you want me to say? They're just rich. Uh, but I'm just saying that a lot of people, uh, the car is one thing that they really like to splurge on. Uh, and you see a lot of young people do this. Uh, and when someone is driving a fancy car, you can't tell who's like stretching to afford that car and who can comfortably afford that car. You just see the person driving, right? So uh, that's number one thing I have to say. And the second thing I have to say is that if you make six figures and you're struggling to afford a 20K car, uh, you got to ask yourself, do you have an income problem or do you have a spending problem? Uh, so uh, without more context, if I were to take a wild guess, I would say that you have a spending problem. Uh, because I drive around a 20k car, okay, so and I don't make six figures, not even close. Uh, so uh, if you can't afford a 20k car uh, and you're making six figures, you got to figure out where your money is going at the end of each month. Uh, now, OP didn't provide the details of his family, so maybe he has a lot of kids, right? So that could be a thing. Maybe he's also single income. Uh, maybe he lives in a very expensive area like downtown Toronto. So yeah, without more context, I really can't say anything else about this, but uh, you might have to move to a less expensive area that's farther away from your work and add to your commute a bit because uh, most of the time, the people that don't have any money left over at the end of the month is because their rent is too high. So rent is the biggest spender, obviously, for everyone's um, like budget, right? Or if you own your house, like mortgage, you probably have a mortgage, right? So mortgage 
mortgage or rent is probably your biggest single expense. Uh, so, you know, if you could move to a place with lower rents or, uh, you know, sell your house and move farther away to like a cheaper house with a lower mortgage payment, that'll really help with your financial situation and that will really help with your cash flow. Uh, if you really analyze your budget, you'll probably find a decent amount of wiggle room for a 20K car if you make six figures. So you just got to play around with the numbers a bit, see where you can save an extra few bucks at the end of every month. And if you really can't save anything, well, then you got to consider maybe moving to a less expensive area because uh, you really aren't able to afford your current rent or mortgage or uh, f um, afford your lifestyle is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so don't get mad. That's just my opinion. Uh, and I'm only commenting on what's written and I don't have any more background info. So uh, that's it for today. I'll leave the video here. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.